Hello everyone, TJV here, and today I'm going to be talking about some news that involves Liz Katz, her most recent tweets, H2O Delirious and what he might actually look like, and a man named Scott, where he just really wants to see his kid and talk to his kid again. A couple disclaimers before we jump into all of this. First off, there's no hate going towards anyone. I'm not trying to harm people with this video. The main goal of this video is just to tell a man's story who came forward to me and wanted his story to be told. He feels like this is the only other avenue for him to take because he's exhausted everything else and you will learn in this video his story and why he's came to this point. Second, I know there's a lot of private information being shared in this. Scott felt like it was important for this to be shared out there openly in the public not only to validate who he is, but also to validate his story and what he's been through. And to him, he feels like he needs to expose Liz Katz and Delirious for some monstrous acts that they have done. And lastly, I just want to put out there that I've really been exhausted having to hear this entire story and go through all this not knowing the truth. At the end of the day, all I want to know is the truth. And I want to know whether or not these are decent people or not decent people. Because at the end of the day, we watch H2O Delirious' content. People go to look at Liz Katz and what she does online. But at the end of the day, everyone would probably want to know if these are decent people and if these people deserve a following or not. Similar to the mini live situation where many people stopped watching him and unsubscribed, after realizing that he is not a decent person, people left. And at the end of the day, that's really what people want. They just want the truth. And today, I'm going to be giving Scott's side of the story. It will be up to you to make your assessment and your opinion at the end of this video, or if you need to know more information from Delirious and Liz after this video. And I'm tired of this. It didn't need to happen this way. I didn't need to, to have to escalate things. Um, all I needed was somebody to be decent. And... My name is Scott Reinhardt. I am uh, Elizabeth Katz, former husband and the father of her oldest child, uh, Zane Reinhardt. Scott Reinhardt is the ex-husband of Liz Katz, and they have a kid together named Zane, and he is currently 14 years old. Scott and Liz were together out on the West Coast. After meeting and dating, they ended up getting married and having a kid named Zane. This marriage didn't end up working out between them, and they eventually had a divorce. Someone who's been involved in this, which is Julie, Scott's aunt and paralegal, who ended up being court-ordered for supervised visits, was there and got to meet Liz and see Liz and Scott's kid, Zane. You were court-ordered, supervised for visitations, and you also uh -huh. um, processed the divorce as well. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the law office did. I mean, I did the paperwork, but the attorney, my husband, he signed the papers and uh, reviewed everything. But... Uh, yeah, we did help him with the, the divorce and the custody agreement, and um, so I don't know what she's fighting about because I don't know. She she left. She left. She left California and went to North Carolina, and left Zane with Scott. You know. At one time, Liz ended up leaving to go to a convention and eventually met H2O Delirious. Scott ended up realizing that she was pregnant and she was pregnant with H2O Delirious's kid. Basically, out of the blue, she goes on a flight to some place, a convention or whatever, comes back. My son and I are talking and he says, hey, you know, mom, mom's seeing H2O Delirious. I don't know how I feel about that because that was our thing. We used to watch Van Oss. And uh, I said, oh, okay, well. You know, how's that going? And he's, I don't know, I don't know the guy, but he's, he's kind of weird. Mom and him just talk on the phone. And then um, eventually uh, I, I noticed some changes in Liz and I was like, hey, um, Liz, you're pregnant. And she looked at me surprised. She goes, what? Huh? How, how, did, how did you know? And I said, you're my, my wife. I, you know, I, I know the changes. You're pregnant with someone's kid. And she said, well, it's a guy I met at a convention. And then I said, H2O Delirious. And she looked at me again, like, what the fuck? Why do you know these things? And uh, I told her, I said, you know, uh, Zane kind of let it slip that, you know, you were talking to, to Delirious. And, um, you know, I, I said, I'm concerned. I mean, you're pregnant by a guy who's on the East Coast. Uh, 
How's that going to work? At this point, Liz and Scott couldn't be too far away when it comes to raising Zane and everything, so Scott ended up deciding that he's going to give up everything he has over on the West Coast and move to North Carolina. Therefore, Delirious, who was pregnant with Liz at the time, could be around the kids that were going to be born, and a father wouldn't have to be away from his kids. So Scott packed up and moved out to North Carolina so they could all be together, so Scott and Liz continue to raise Zane, and Delirious and Liz could raise their new kids and everything could be fine. So then my son starts telling me she's going to try to move uh, across across country and that um, she's going to try to involve the lawyers and he said he's going to he's going to come live with me. You know, I, I was like, well, I can't really do a whole lot other than the court order that we have that says that she can't be more than 100 miles away from me uh, without it being kidnapping. And he said, OK. And I said, what we can do is I can relocate so that we can all be in the same location, but I don't want to relocate at this guy's, so I need to talk to him. So I called Liz and I told her, hey, you know, I've been told that you're planning on trying to relocate without my consent. And uh, there is an anchor clause in our divorce agreement that says that you can't go more than 100 miles away from me. And uh, I said, I, I don't want to deny anybody their right to be a father, um, so I'm going to I'm gonna do the, the best thing about it. And I'm going to go there so that you can have your child with their father and I could be with my son as well. And she, she took a minute and she said, well, I was, uh, thank you for, for doing the right thing. And I said, but I have a, I have a, I have a condition. I need to talk to him. I need to see that he's an okay guy and I need to just feel right about it. So she, she had him call me reluctantly and I talked to him and he sounded like a nice guy. No, no problem. I mean, it's like, okay, he just doesn't sound too different from, from his, his videos on YouTube. And, um, you know, I just told him, all right, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and prepare to move. And, you know, we, we went about our merry way. No big deal. Um, I hadn't met him at all. Hadn't seen him. You know, there was no video conference or anything like that. It was just a normal phone call. And that is pretty much the backstory with Scott, Liz, and Delirious and how they know each other. And we're pretty much here in the present day. But why am I telling you all this information and why am I sitting here and telling private information and catching you guys up to the present day? Well, because the present day, Scott does not have his kid Zane. He feels like his kid is being held against him and Liz refuses contact between Zane and Scott, father and son, and there's no calling, no texting, and no meeting up, and no Zane going over to Scott's place or Scott coming over to Delirious and Liz's place to see Zane. My issue at this point is that Liz has taken liberty to steal my son. And one of the things I have to leverage is the fact that I know what he really looks like. Uh, you know, I, I have no problems with giving that over to people if they don't give me my son, if they don't let me talk to him. My son and I have always had a great relationship. I raised him most of his life and he lived with me up until a few weeks ago. He, he went to her house and then he just never came back. She wouldn't let me call him. She wouldn't let me talk to him. There's been nothing that would have happened between him and I personally that would result in this sort of thing. And she's done this before. Some of this reason might be Scott's ex and what she did. Apparently she made threats towards Liz and Scott urged Liz to get a restraining order, um, but Liz wanted Scott to also get a restraining order. But is there any specific reason to why she wouldn't let you see your son and why she would just cut all communication with your son and you? Um, okay, so I had a girlfriend that, you know, she has some problems and I broke up with her. She, she's, she's harmless, but she's, very loud like a chihuahua you know a lot of bark not a lot of bite um she had threatened liz and when she threatened liz liz has a tendency to be histrionic i told liz to contact the police and get a restraining order because i didn't want liz to be at risk i literally was protecting liz i could have just not said anything about it in this case she wanted me to file a restraining order against my ex-girlfriend and i said it wasn't necessary that um, I didn't need to, but if she wanted to, she could. Scott said no and didn't want to do this at all, and it eventually led to something like this happening, which by the way, Scott says that this isn't the first time Zane has been held away. Um, is this the first time she's uh, leveraged your kid with you or no? No, she does it whenever she gets a chance. If, if I don't do what she wants, but she does occasionally pull stuff like this where she just leverages things and she tries to get her way and you know, she she acts unfairly because she really doesn't care about anyone but herself. And she's not above lying. 
And since this wasn't the first time, maybe people are asking, well, why didn't you work it out like you did the other times when Zane was held away from you? Well, Scott feels like he is now trapped in his own home. I, I literally, my motivation on this is to get it as far as possible. Uh, just they can't serve me. I'm in a, a place that is walled with cameras. So if the police come here to serve me, they can't serve me. So I'm not under any orders. I can say and do what I want until I'm forced to take the paperwork. Okay. And they have no reason to open my door. There's no risk of my safety or any reason to believe there's any crimes that have been committed. So they can't come in my house. Scott's also been getting a cease and desist online through email from Liz and Delirious's attorneys. And some of this is because of what Scott has said online on his own Twitter account, where they believe that these are threats made out to pretty much out Liz and Delirious and what he looks like and personal information and photographs. But Scott at this point feels like that that is his only way since he's been given a cease and desist online and he's been denied on seeing his own kid Zane at the age of 14. Yeah, it's a face reveal. It's what they've been celebrating forever as like a joke. Only this one's not a joke. I'm planning on syndicating it. If they don't give me access to my son, there's a point in time where my generosity and kindness runs out. Like, I have been really, really kind about this whole thing. I mean, I have, have only left it to comments, like opinions, more or less an op-ed about the way he looks. Um, I can be very, very, uh, very prolific in my distribution and syndication of his content, you know, like his face, like what he looks like. Um, and I, it would be, I know it would be devastating to pretty much everything if uh, people knew that he was a liar. So I'm not concerned about it in general. Like, what are they going to do? Sue me for money I don't have? I mean, that's basically what they threatened me with. So, I mean, they can put me in jail. Okay, great. I mean, when I get out, I'll just do it again. I have no incentive to be nice at this point because they won't let me have my son. I mean, what, what good is a father without their kid? When I asked Scott why would Liz and Delirious be holding your kid away from you, he only brought up the ex-girlfriend and the threats made, and then also his tweets online. The ex-girlfriend thing, Scott felt like that was pretty much handled because Scott told Liz to get a restraining order against her and just move on and she ain't that harmless and XYZ. And with the tweets that he made online threatening to expose Delirious, he did that after the fact when his kid was already taken from him and he's been refused contact or any sort of visitation to his own kid. Scott feels like if he takes the legal approach, he's just going to have to enter a lawsuit with Liz and Delirious, which he knows he doesn't really have much, and they know he doesn't really have much, and he feels like it's going to be a big waste of time and he won't be able to see his kid longer. He feels like Liz and Delirious have been playing dirty, and the only way for him to play dirty back is by putting this information out there. I'm not going to be showing what Delirious looks like because I'm not going to have my channel used for exposing what somebody looks like, and he's already expressed he's not going to expose the address because he has standards he's not going to have the children be affected by all of this i i would not uh first of all i would not give their address away i that my son's there and his sisters are there children are off limits always no matter what you think of the parents you leave kids alone there's just no way i would never put those kids at risk now, would I ruin him by revealing that he's a liar and that he is misrepresenting himself to the public? Yes, I would definitely expose him. I would definitely show his face to the world because he has it coming. He should have told people a long time ago. He should have showed everything. And Liz just gives him more credibility as far as like him being some handsome guy because people like logically, they're like, well, why would Liz be with him if he's ugly? It's, it's, not, it's not even that. I mean, he's a creepy dude. He is really weird um you know i mean i did these big favors for him and he treats me like garbage on top of this he feels like every interaction he's had with delirious has been honestly pretty bad i had met him uh, at the house he was when i first met him he was taking the trash out so i pulled in and he just grunted at me and walked inside and uh this guy is like 500 pounds he has one eye his face is really just it looks almost like a gargoyles he's uh, he's very goonish he's said almost nothing to me he groans grunts and then walks away in like three years he has not so much as said hi to me politely liz had to make him say hi to me once you know so i i've just never treated anyone as bad as he's treated me and I, I don't know what I ever did to deserve that, but at this point, I'm just tired. 
I, I just I can't compete with him on money, but I can I can definitely put this out. And he describes Delirious being really overweight and missing an eye. And people might think that this is an extreme take. And obviously this guy's making up stuff. But after talking to people, yeah, people who know Delirious, he is missing an eye. And apparently this is why Cartoons has a little character as his main logo, Missing an Eye. He's, uh, when most people say someone's remarkable, they mean they're saying they're handsome. He's the exact opposite. Like, when you say he's remarkable, it means that he is remarkably ugly. Like, he is just physically grotesque. Why would it matter um, to you um, whether or not he's a certain weight or if he's a certain level of attractiveness? Like, why would that matter? Well, I don't, I don't, care. I don't care what he looks like other than the fact that he lies to everyone. So he's got a picture that he deliberately had leaked of a Hispanic guy in a beanie that's supposed to be him. If you look on all the wikis, it shows either him as a cartoon character or it shows this Hispanic kid. He paid that person to not to under NDA to pretend to be him, to never state that he's not him. And so if somebody found out who he is, then it would be understood that, you know, he's to just play dumb. Um, and he's allowed this, this misidentification of himself to be perpetrated for years. Um, he is not that guy at all. He is, if you understand Liz, you know that she's a gold digger. She really is. She's, there's no reason to be with this guy other than money. Apparently, Scott has sat here and said that he heard from Liz Katz herself that he ended up paying this guy to pretend to be delirious for a leaked photo that's out there and sign something where he'll never talk about it. Scott feels like that this portrayal he's been having online where he refuses to show what he looks like has actually been harmful and that any parent who lets their kid watch H2O Delirious would really second guess it if they really got to see who H2O Delirious was. Well, it's kind of like the Barney and Elmo thing, right? You know, those guys seem so great until you find out what they're up to behind the scenes. At the end of the day, does it matter if people find out his name and what he looks like? Well, no. People know people's names and what people look like. It all depends on personal preference. And Scott feels like it is necessary to out him on this sort of thing because he's been getting the short end of the stick from them and there's really no other option. And this last time, I, I got tired of it. So I told her, I said, you know, I... I want to talk to my son, and if you don't let me talk to him, I'm going to show everyone what Jonathan looks like. Um, because I'm just tired of, of having to go with the back and forth. I'm not going to lose my son for, you know, six months because she decides she wants to be difficult. You know, he's not in any danger in my home. He's never been in any danger. He's only ever received love. He's never been spanked or, or punished in any meaningful way. Another little tidbit of information I didn't know is apparently Delirious has never been into music, so the new Delirious lo-fi channel absolutely is nothing to do with Delirious. That is actually Zane, who's been into music and doing music with his actual father, Scott. And that Delirious had it turned into some sort of Delirious-related lo-fi music in order to profit off of it and boost the channel higher for the sun. You know, just, I would recommend that everybody join my son's new music uh, channel that Delirious and um, Liz made to bribe him to stay around. Uh, the the low low fi uh, low beat um, music that channel that Delirious released that was another hobby that my son and I had together. We used to make music. So I mean, you know, Delirious magically becomes a musician. Just saying, it's just stuff. You know, they they're you know they're gonna flip it and basically he's gonna make a ton of money because they flip it like that, directing, you know, the crowd to my son's channel and not telling anybody that it's my son until later. You know, they're just, it, it's its the most fucked up thing that people can really do is just um, manipulate a child using, you know, finances and, and things. I mean, I can't compete on that. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't make my house into a theme park. I can't uh, literally just keep buying him stuff over a weekend until he thinks twice about whether or not he wants to leave or stay. Kids, they're, they're, they're drawn to having stuff. And at this point, he's not talking to any of his friends. He's ghosted everybody. He's not talking to any of them. And like, they, they love me. They think I'm great. They're, they're concerned. They're contacting me and they're asking what's going on because he hasn't talked to them in almost a month. Other information that I was told was that there was always a competitive nature between Scott and Liz and Delirious, where no matter what Scott gave his son Zane, he always got one-upped over at the Liz and Delirious house because of the amount of money that they made. Most of his interests are mine. I mean, he's he collects records, VHS tapes, he likes arcades. Most of the stuff they have in their house is because she was trying to compete with me, 
So I have an arcade machine. She put in an entire arcade. Um, I, you know, I bought him a CRT and a bunch of VHS, and she went and bought a library of VHS movies and, you know, that sort of thing. It's like always, you know, times 10 on whatever I do. And it's stuff she has no interest in, but she, she does it because it's his interest and, you know, it's something that he and I have in common that we share. Again, this is just standard parental competition that's escalated to a point where it's just ridiculous, but... On top of this, there has been concern on how Liz and Delirious having a safe environment for children. He generally hates her. Like, he despises her. He knows about her porn, and he knows about her hooking. He knows that she was a prostitute and a bunch of other things, and he knows about how I got doxxed and, you know, how it almost ruined my career being married to her. Zane, when he was even little, when they first split up and and Liz would come to pick him back up, he would have a fit and he would tell her, I'm not going with you. You're not my mom. I don't like you. And so she kept saying Scott was doing that. And I said, no, Scott was living in my house, you know, and, and when Zane was there, Jane, Zane was with me too. And I never heard Scott tell him stuff like that. As a matter of fact, he kept trying to tell her, tell him, that's your mother, you need to watch what you're saying, you know, and then he said, well, she's just a whore, because apparently he saw her filming stuff, and he oh, was wow. little, yeah, and he just, and so the way he, he feels about his mom is his mom's fault, she shouldn't have been doing that, she shouldn't have left things open where he could see that, the pictures, the film, that's not okay with me. Julie claims these erotic photos and the potential of kids walking in and seeing their mom do this and how this is dangerous and affecting the kids. Are you, what are you doing in terms of hoping to see your kid again? Are, are you, is there any hope for that? I've offered these animals a mutual non-disparagement agreement, which is kind of off the table because they're trying to serve me with a civil suit. So, I mean, I originally tried to take the high road and I was like, listen, you know, we'll do a non-disparagement, which would basically be a non-disclosure with, with, a, with a clause in it that says no, no talking bad about either party. We just, we just take the high road and always keep our mouth shut. And, um, you know, I figured, you know, phone call so I can talk to my son, but they won't let me have the phone call because if he talks to me, he's going to be mad at his mom and he's going to come back. So they would rather spend tens of thousands of dollars in litigation, you know, trying to get me served and trying to get me to court and trying to sue me for money they know they're never going to get uh, and, and terms they're never going to get because I'm not going to obey a court order until I get my son. I'm going to keep going. I don't care if I go to jail. I don't care if I get sued until I'm homeless. They can do whatever they want. I, I will keep going until I get my son. I am my, I am my son's father. I have done nothing to warrant them treating me like this. They, they've shown their true colors. And while this is all wrapping up, Scott's main concern is that he just can't see his son Zane, and he can't even talk to him or contact him in any way. After listening to Scott, he does sound a little believable in my own opinion. I'm not trying to portray anything in this video as 100% fact, just like how I said in the beginning of this video, you're going to have to make your own assessment of this. But if Liz and Delirious are really doing this while battling lawsuits with Omrecker and other people as well, and they're trying to make content and a living and trying to parent, it seems like that Liz and Delirious might be getting themselves a little bit more into trouble if this is all true, if they're taking away Zane from their father Scott. And the fact that Scott feels like his last avenue is sharing this publicly really breaks my heart. I hope that people watch this video and make your own assessment from it, but at the end of the day, Zane should be able to see his father Scott if this is not happening, and at the end of the day, I just hope that the kids are doing alright in this situation because at the end of the day, this entire feud, this drama, shouldn't be affecting the kids in any sort of way. It seems like it is, but it shouldn't be. I really hope Liz and Delirious figure out whatever their issues with Scott is and end them quickly because if this is true where Zane can't go and see his father Scott, it will affect him for a while and it's kind of untold what those effects will be in the long run. When I went to Delirious to try to get his side of the story, Delirious responded he had zero idea who it was. Liz has been slightly hinting at this over at her Twitter, posting about it and calling Scott a lunatic and a dangerous man. When it doesn't seem like it, it just seems like he wants to see his kid. And yes, it's going to lead a father to do really dumb things like going on Twitter and trying to expose Delirious, which I do feel like is dumb, but what else is he going to do if he has no way of seeing his kid? 
go get sued, lose all of his money, go to jail. I'm still ain't gonna get him to go see his son. We'll have to see if they end up making a comment. I really hope that this video and a lot of this information out there, which I know it's gonna be a lot to take in, especially for Liz and Delirious to know that some of this information is out there, but I really hope that there are no immediate responses without thinking. I hope that all parties really think this out now that this information is out there and I've been asked to share this information. Hopefully that this gets resolved and a little bit more of the truth is out there. In the description and at the top of the comments, I have the original interviews with Julie, Scott's aunt, and the interview with Scott. In its entirety, I had to redact some information from those interviews, but there's a lot more information there if you want to hear what they have to say and the questions I asked them. Last Scott wanted to share this before I stopped recording our interview. Well, I'm going to end the recording here real quick. If yep. Is there anything else you'd like to add before I end it? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything else to say other than I want my son back. I want to at least talk to him on the phone so he can make his own determination on what to do. And I'm tired of this. It didn't need to happen this way. I didn't need to, to have to escalate things. Um, all I needed was somebody to be decent. And, you know, Liz is incapable of that. That's it. She lies. She cheats. She steals. She's dishonest. She is on her face a liar. And I, I can't, uh, I can no longer, uh, I can no longer accept this kind of treatment from somebody 